And now, stay tuned for the mystery program that is unique among all mystery programs. Because even when you know who's guilty, you always receive a startling surprise at the final curtain. In the Signal Oil program, The Whistler. Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline, invite you to sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I am The Whistler, and I know many things for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Signal Oil Company, the Whistler's strange story, The Cliffs at Wayrum. The early morning fog moved in and about the scene in swirling, misty patches. Beneath it, adding its own lonely rhythm of sound, was the sea. The cliffs rose high above, dominating it all. But Paul Galvin and the sheriff were oblivious to the cliffs, the weather, and the sound of the sea. Their attentions were focused on the still, limp form of the man who had been Mario Lovetti. Paul Galvin had made the discovery and sent for the sheriff. Hmm. Mario Lovetti. Ever hear the name, Paul? No, he's a complete stranger to me. I'm sure he's a complete stranger to the village away room, too. I know it's odd that he'd come here to, well, to kill himself. Well, it could have been an accident, I suppose. Uh-huh. Yeah, it looks like he fell from a spot very close to your place. Paul, uh, was Mr. Galvin expecting anyone last night? Any visitors? Uncle Kurt? Hmm? No, not that I know of, Sheriff. Uh, of course, you can come up to the house and we'll ask him. Yeah, it might be a good idea. Anyway, I can call from up there. Have the body removed. Yeah, come on. We can take the path up the cliffs. Struggling up the path, you smile to yourself, Paul. The fact of Mario Lovetti's strange death is going to make a difference in your life, isn't it? Yes, a big difference. You're disappointed that your Uncle Kurt Galvin is not in the house when you arrive with the sheriff. But it doesn't really matter. You let the sheriff use the telephone for his calls, finally bid him goodbye, and then hurry down to the village. The cabin cruiser is tied up alongside a small dock, just as you expected. And also as you expected, Kurt is on board. You can hear him whistling as you approach. He's happily polishing the brass work on the starboard rail. Kurt? Uncle Kurt? Huh? Oh, Paul, come aboard. Thanks. What brings you down here? There's, um... Been an accident, Kurt. Accident? Yeah, a man fell from the cliffs. Happened during the night. Is that so? It's too bad. Yeah, isn't it? Not only for Mr. Lovetti. What are you talking about? You know, Uncle Kurt, things are going to be run a little differently around the old homestead from now on. <laughs> Very differently, I should say. Oh? Yeah. You see, I've, um, I've wanted to take over the management of the Galvin interest for some time now. Handle my own money. Hmm. Think you're big enough to handle the job, do you? I was out on the cliff path last night. I saw who pushed Mario Lavetti over. Well? The sheriff wants to talk to you. I'll talk to him. But so will I. Unless... Unless I let you start running things? Forget it, Paul. Mario Lavetti had the idea that he could change things, too. For both of us. I don't understand. Uh, sit down, Paul. I think I've got a bit of shock for you. You're wasting your time, Kurt. We're going to have an understanding, or I'll go to the police. Sit down. We'll have an understanding, a good one. Let me light my pipe here. This is quite a story. You know, this Mario Lavetti spent some time in Italy. So? He ran into something very interesting over there. I never thought I'd have to tell you. But you're not 
Paul Galvin. What? No need to get excited, Paul. It's, it's pretty simple. When my brother and his wife were killed in that auto accident over there... Oh, that was 20 years ago. What's that got to do with this? Listen, will you? I went over to bring young Paul home. I was to manage the estate till I thought he was old I enough. know all about that. But you don't know, and neither does anyone else. But young Paul died of fever at the tender age of four. This is ridiculous. It's something you're inventing. Oh, no. I have proof. Don't worry. Proof that I picked you up and passed you off as my nephew. I... I don't believe it. You see, I'd never had much money of my own, and... Well, I didn't want to lose control of the estate. It's been a mighty comfortable arrangement for both of us. I'm not Paul Galvin. Your real name, if you're interested, is... Angelo Cortesi. I believe your father was a well digger or something like that. Not Paul Galvin. That's why I had to get rid of Mario Lovetti. That's why you killed him. Shoved him off the cliff. Yes. You would have tried to change things, too. You were a wealthy man, Paul. But only as my nephew. Otherwise, you're... Nothing. You get the idea, I give you enough, my boy, more than you could acquire any other way. <laughs> Unless, of course, you wanted to try working. Skip it, Kurt. Uncle. <laughs> now you're seeing the light, eh? And you won't go running to the police? Hardly. <laughs> of course not. And I'll go right on running things, won't I, Paul? <laughs> likely to be passing a lot of signal service stations during your summer vacation driving. So it occurred to me that you might like to know a little more about this friendly organization, which brings you the Whistler. Well, first of all, signal products have always been sold through independently operated stations. The reason? Signal Oil Company believes that a man who has his own business naturally has more incentive to serve you better. Secondly, because you want top-quality products for your car, each and every signal station is backed by an organization which serves the many hundreds of signal dealers throughout the western states, with facilities to bring you every latest advance in petroleum science. Obviously, drivers must like this combination of signals' personalized service plus fine-quality signal products when you consider how fast signal has grown into an organization serving the entire West Coast from border to border. To see for yourself one of the good reasons for this increasing popularity, drop into a signal station tomorrow. Fill up your tank and discover the good mileage and performance of Signal, the famous go-farther gasoline. you're back in your same position. Your Uncle Kurtz told you that you're not Paul Galvin at all, that he brought you from Italy as a child and passed you off these many years. And now you can't say or do anything about it. It doesn't seem possible, does it, Paul? Especially as you stand in the great hall of the house on the cliffs. Stare up at a pair of oil paintings which until now you believe to be portraits of your own parents. And as you stand there, one of the servants provides you with another shock, as he mentions what he thinks is simply a bit of news to you. Uh, yes, Mr. Paul, uh, that's what I heard, uh, that this uh, Mar Mario Lavetti wasn't alone in the village the other evening. Uh, Nick, you say someone saw him driving in a car? Uh, uh, yes, sir, uh, with a woman. Uh, the sheriff is trying to find her. He believes she might shed some light on the mystery. Oh, well, it's, it's no mystery. A man falls or jumps from a high place. It happens every day. Uh, yes, sir. I just thought you'd want to know about it, sir. Yes, Paul, you do want to know about it. And Kurt must be informed right away. Must be told that there's someone else, a woman. 
who might have shared the information that brought on Mario Lavetti's sudden death. And then you remember that Kurt is away on one of the many trips he takes. And you curse his irresistible love for the sea. As long as you can remember, he has come and gone with the tide. But his wanderings might make such a difference at the moment. You wait impatiently for the end of the week in Kurt's return. And then hurry to the pier. Kurt's cruiser is tied up there, but when you get aboard, you find he's already gone ashore. And then from inside the cabin, you happen to glance out a porthole. Stare puzzled at a girl who's advancing along the pier towards you. You hurry up on the deck and wait. You looking for somebody? Oh, no. I, I just saw this boat. She looks pretty. I like boats. Oh? Well, step aboard if you like. Oh, well, may I? Sure. Thank you. Oh, my, she is a trim little craft. Yeah. I, uh... I'm vacationing down here. Rented a cottage in the village. Oh, nice. Oh, I'm uh, Paul Galvin. I'm Eva Williams. Uh, you have that big house on the cliffs, don't you? Why, yes. Oh, it's beautiful. And uh, this is your boat? Oh, it's my uncle's, Kurt Galvin. But uh, how did you know I lived up there? Oh, the Galvin estate was pointed out to me. Uh, there was an accident several days ago, wasn't there, Man fell off the cliffs? Yes, he was a stranger. You, uh, you didn't know him. Know him? Me? <laughs> Why should I? Oh, no reason. It's just that we don't have many visitors down here. Well, I don't understand that. I like it here very much. People are friendly. Ask other people aboard their boats. <laughs> well, I could be friendlier than that, Miss Williams. Eva. Eva? Yeah, I, I'd like to uh, show you about the place, such as it is. Uh, perhaps tomorrow afternoon, if you'd care to have me drive into the village and meet you. Oh, I'd like that very much. You, um, you haven't a car yourself? No, no, I haven't. Well, I'll uh, drive in about two. Where are you staying? At the Shore Cottages, number five. Shore Cottages, number five. I'll be there, Eva. <laughs> You're not quite sure of this Eva Williams, are you, Paul? You had the strangest feeling when you first saw her through the porthole of Kurt's boat that she was the one, the missing woman who was with Mario Lovetti a short while before he died. Later, talking with Kurt, you find that he has little concern over the uh, missing woman theory. It's ridiculous, Paul. Well, you worried too much. Yeah, but one of the villagers saw Lovetti with a woman, Kurt. Well, she, she was riding in a car with him, and she might know as much as he did. I know who gave that report, old Captain Dave. He's got the usual imagination of the old soft. Why, a few weeks back, he reported a flying saucer. Well, I thought you should know. I'm pleased you told me, Paul. Proves you're aware of the situation, that we're together in this. <laughs> Perhaps he's right about the mystery woman, Paul. Perhaps she exists only in old Captain Dave's imagination. You meet Eva the next day, and in the days that follow, you find yourself spending more and more time with her. She's an attractive girl, isn't she, Paul? And you're becoming quite fond of her and sense somehow she's interested in you, too. Then late one evening after dinner, the two of you sit alone before the great fireplace at the inn, sipping your drink listening to the storm outside. You've been kind of quiet all evening. Was something on your mind? Yes. You want to talk about it? Yes, yes, I guess I do. You know, it's funny sometimes, the way things work out, just the way you expected. I knew a long time ago, Paul, it would happen this way. And it... It has. But what do you mean? When the real thing came along, I'd know it in an instant. I knew it the day we met at the boat. Eva. Eva, are you telling me that... I'm in love with you, Paul. Oh, Eva, darling. No, no, wait, Paul. 
There's something I've got to tell you. It's very important. My name isn't Williams. It's Lovetti. Lovetti? That man... Found at the bottom of the cliffs? My brother. I see. Then you were... Yes, the... yes, I was with him that night. He'd asked me to drive him down here. He got out of the car not far from your house and told me to wait for him in the village. Well, I waited all night. The next morning, I heard he'd been found at the cliffs. An accident, of course. You know, that path is rather treacherous and... I don't and think they... it was an accident, Paul. Oh? Mario was up to something. He wouldn't tell me what, but I had an idea that whatever it was, it... Well, it wasn't very honest. One thing I do know. He was to meet a man named Galvin. He told you that? Yes. And then when I heard someone named Paul Galvin had found him, I began to wonder. Oh, now, see here, Eva, no, no, I... let I, me I... finish, Paul, please. That same morning, I drove back to town to Mario's apartment. I, I didn't know what I was looking for, but, well, it was a hunch. And that's when I found the letter. Letter? Addressed to Mario. The letter indicated the writer was willing to pay a certain sum of money that a, a meeting was to be arranged. Mario was obviously blackmailing this man who signed the letter with a with an initial K. K that could be Kurt, couldn't it, Paul? My uncle? Oh, really, Eva, you can't yes. mean that you think... Yes, that's why I came back here, to see him. But instead, I, I ran into you first, and it happened to me. Just, just like that. Look, Eva, I'm sure Kurt had nothing to do with your brother's death, but that letter could make it look like you... Darling, please, you've got to destroy it. I'm afraid it's too late for that, Paul. What? what do you mean? I mailed the letter to the sheriff's office this morning. You know this sudden turn in the tide of events is the beginning of the end, don't you, Paul? You sit there staring into the fire. It had all gone well until now, hadn't it, Paul? But now that Eva's mailed that letter to the sheriff, you know it's only a matter of time before Kurt is arrested. And when he is, you're certain he'll expose you as an imposter. The Galvin fortune will slip from your grasp. You can't risk losing that fortune, can you, Paul? You know now you'll do anything to save it. I'm sorry, Paul. I had to do it. As much as I love you, knowing it could mean the end of everything for us, I had to do it. <laughs> You stalk out of the inn, leaving Eva without explanation. Get in your car and drive up the narrow road to the house on the cliffs. Suddenly you realize it's a slim chance the sheriff hasn't yet received the letter. As you reach the house and skid to a stop, you find another car parked in the driveway. The sheriff's car, Paul. And you know you're too late. You get out of the car and look up to see the sheriff coming down the steps. But he's alone, Paul. Oh, Paul, uh... Paul, uh, have you any idea where Kurt is? Kurt? Uh-huh. Uh, isn't he home? Nope. Your housekeeper said he left this afternoon. Oh, that's right. He did. Uh, did he say where he was going? Uh, no. No, he didn't say. Why, Sheriff? Is there something important? Yes, very important. Well, now, look, if you want to leave a message, I'd oh, be no, glad to no. see that he... I'll yeah. take care of it. Personally. Good night. You remember now, don't you, Paul? Kurt told you he was driving into the city, having dinner with an old friend tonight. But you couldn't tell the sheriff that, could you? You hurry into the house, to Kurt's desk in the study. You're looking for the small black book of telephone numbers when your hand closes over the gun. Kurt's gun. You pick it up, stare at it, and suddenly a thought strikes you. You see a way out, don't you, Paul? You slip the gun into your pocket, and a moment later, put in your call to the city. Finally, Kurt's voice. What is it, Paul? You'd better get back here as soon as you can. Something's happened. Oh? The sheriff was here asking for you. What did he want? I can't tell you now. Now, look, I'll be waiting for you at the boat. You'd better hurry. Oh, and, uh, Kurt, don't let anyone see you. A 
quarter of an hour later, you step aboard Kurt's boat, tied up along the end of the pier, and settle down in the darkened cabin to wait. Time drags. Midnight. There's still no sign of Kurt. Then one o'clock. Two. And the panic within you grows with each passing minute. Finally, you hurry off the boat. And as you start down the pier, you see someone approaching. Kurt! That you, Paul? What kept you so long? The boat's blocked off five miles back. Landslide. Had to take a detour. What's up? That girl I told you about, Eva. She's Lovetti's sister. I see. She found a letter you'd written to Lovetti about the, uh, the blackmail and the meeting with him. How does she know I wrote that letter? I only signed my initial. Yes, well, she seems to figure that K stands for Kurt. And Lovetti told her he was meeting a man named Galvin. Uh huh. That's not good, is it, Paul? Now, listen, you've got to get out of here right now. Yes, I suppose that would be the wise thing to do. Of course, you understand, Paul, I'm... Well, it's going to take money, a lot of money, to run and keep running. I'll expect you to send me whatever amount I ask for from time to time. Yes, yes, I'll take care of it, Kurt. <laughs> be sure you do. You wouldn't want me to get caught, would you? <laughs> Come on, let's get aboard. <laughs> You watch Kurt as he steps aboard the boat and disappears into the cabin. And you know that as long as he's alive, your secret is in danger. There's always the possibility he'll be caught someday and reveal you as an imposter. And you don't want that, do you, Paul? You pull the gun out of your pocket. And as you do, a car comes to a stop under the streetlight at the far end of the pier. The sheriff's car, Paul. You drop to one knee behind a large packing case on the pier, your mind spinning furiously. You've got to stop him. You know what your next move must be. A move you're sure will solve all your problems and enable you to take over the Galvin estate immediately. The sheriff is halfway down the pier when you pull the trigger. As he crumbles on the pier, you whirl. Jump aboard the boat and rush into the cabin. What the devil was that? Who? Paul... What are you doing with that gun? You've just killed the sheriff, Uncle Kurt. And now you're going to commit suicide. What are you talking about, you fool? It's all very simple. The sheriff came to arrest you, and you killed him. Then you turned the gun on yourself. Now, now, wait a minute, Paul. Don't... It's done, isn't it, Paul? Kurt is dead. You step over his body, press the gun into his right hand. Then you hurry up on deck and race down the pier to a telephone. Five minutes later, the pier is alive with excited villagers gathered around the still form of the sheriff. Two of his deputies are bending over him. He'll be all right. Coming around now. Bullet just creased his skull. Oh, uh, Galvin. Uh, y yes? Come on, let's uh, step aside for a moment. Oh, all right. You were a little excited over the phone. How'd this happen? Well, I, I guess I'd better start at the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I found out tonight that Uncle Kurt was involved in the Lavetti affair. And I came down here to the boat to ask him about it. I found him getting ready to sail. Go on. Well, he admitted to me that he'd killed Mario Lovetti. He pushed him over the cliffs because Lovetti had been blackmailing him. I see. So he was getting ready to make a run for it, huh? Yeah. And then we heard a car stop outside and Uncle Kurt rushed to the porthole, saw the sheriff coming down the pier and, well, well, before I could stop him, he, he pulled out a gun and fired right through the porthole. Fortunately, his aim was bad. Uh, come on, let's get aboard the boat. All right. And then what happened? Well, after Uncle Kurt shot the sheriff... He turned around, and I, I thought he was going to shoot me. Instead, he, he put the gun to his head and killed himself. Uh-huh. Here, this way. Uh. There he is, just the way he fell. I haven't touched a thing. Good. Uh, Dave? Down here. The doc just got here. Good. Sheriff have anything to say? Not much. He didn't see a thing. The slug hit him, he blacked out. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess that's that. Looks like that closes the Lavetti case. Here 
Here's some hot weather mathematics for drivers. Take the temperature of the day. Add 2,800 degrees, the temperature inside the cylinder head of the average motor. That adds up to a lot of heat. Good reason why your motor needs the protection of the improved type signal oil that's engineered to stand up under heat. Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. You see, in addition to its 100% pure paraffin base, Signal Premium contains scientific compounds that do things which oil alone cannot do. One of these compounds, for instance, keeps Signal Premium from breaking down at high temperatures and forming harmful gum or varnish. Another compound prevents bearing corrosion. And still another compound actually removes carbon. That's why we call Signal Premium the oil that does so much more than just lubricate. So if you want your motor to stay young, get your next oil change at a signal station. Change to the improved type signal oil that stands up under heat. Signal Premium Compounded Motor Oil. As you stand there in the cabin of Kurt's boat looking down on his body, you're sure you're in the clear, aren't you, Paul? Certain that the deputy sheriff believes your story. Yes, Kurt first tried to kill the sheriff, then turned the gun on himself, committed suicide. And in the deputy's own words, it looks like that closes the Lavetti case. You turn away now and look up at him. Um, if you don't mind, I... I'd like to run along. I'm not... Just a minute, Paul. Afraid I'm going to have to ask you to come down to headquarters. Headquarters? What for? Paraffin test. Ever hear of it? I want to see if there are any traces of gunpowder on your hand. I think there will be. What are you driving at? I'm pretty certain now that Kurt didn't fire that shot at the sheriff. And that he didn't commit suicide. Oh, that's crazy. I tell you, he that will... That was a pretty solid story you gave me, Paul. Except for one thing. You tell me your uncle was standing at the porthole. Fired a shot through it at the sheriff. Yes. Step over here, will you? Look, I don't know what you're trying to prove. According but... to you, this all happened not more than ten minutes ago. That's right. Take a look out of the porthole. Well, sure, but I don't understand what... Yeah. You're looking right at the pilings of the pier. No. Oh, no, it can't be. This porthole is at least two feet below the surface of the pier. You didn't figure on the sea when you dreamed up your story, did you, Paul? The tide's been going out for the last three hours. Let that whistle be your signal for the Signal Oil program, The Whistler, each Sunday night at this same time. Brought to you by the Signal Oil Company, marketers of Signal gasoline and motor oil and fine quality automotive accessories. Many drivers, when buying gasoline, forget what a big part of the price goes for tax. In fact, in the average western city, for every dollar you pay for gasoline itself, you pay an additional 33 cents in tax. So figure it up, the tax you pay on three would buy you another gallon free. <laughs> Featured in tonight's story were Bill Foreman, Jack Edwards, Joe Gilbert, and Leo Cleary. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian Jean Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch, and was transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. The Whistler is entirely fictional, and all characters portrayed on The Whistler are also fictional. Any similarity of names or resemblance to persons living or dead is purely coincidental. Remember at this same time next Sunday, another strange tale by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking for the Signal Oil Company. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.